Hey guys, welcome back. This week, I wanna revisit the Scorpion. In my last video, I talked about how it compared to the real world and I had a lot of really good feedback and I learned a lot. You know, at the end of the day, it's really cool. In my opinion, still, it does lack a little bit of real world realism. But 343 answered that question themselves in Halo 5 when they released the M820 Scorpion, the most lethal and realistic Scorpion tank ever created in the Halo universe. This week, we're going to take a look at that, how it compares to the M808, the original Scorpion, the one still seen actually in Halo Infinite, as well as some new technology recently unveiled in the United States and how it applies to main battle tanks in the future going forward. When it comes to the M808 versus the M820, basically Legacy Scorpion versus Halo 5s, the M820 has a significantly larger gun, much more in a realistic and like real world credible sense. 150 millimeter. It's listed as having an electrothermical combustion smoothbore gun, which to be frank, I, I could not tell you exactly what electrothermical combustion means. I imagine it's, it's some sort of variation, maybe like a rail gun, as well as using traditional like combustion. It's the same roughly overall length, a little bit wider and four feet taller Despite having a more realistic squared off shape and lower profile, it actually sits a good bit higher than the Scorpion, which is kind of deceptive because it doesn't appear that big when you view it in, in person. It also weighs a lot less. The original Scorpion is over 60 tons, whereas the MA-20 clocks in a little over 30, which is a huge advantage when we talk about air mobility, being able to lift it with a Pelican. If you watch my Pelican video, you know there's a lot of questions that you can be raised about lifting such a heavy vehicle with a single aircraft and lowering the weight makes that much more simple. When we talk about specific ammunitions, there's some variations such as the Oni like Skunk Works Scorpion that uses directed energy, which is very cool. Otherwise, there's mentions of them beginning to use guided munitions. And there's a lot of opportunities there for the UNSC to exploit. Things like airburst munition, fin guided munitions, and all sorts of other crazy cool stuff. On top of that, the MA-20, like the previous Scorpion, and the credit to the commentators who were right about this, uses some variation of diesel or other fuel source electric hybrid powertrain. Presumably it has infrared sights as well as infrared lights for night vision capability as well as advanced battlefield sensors. It talks about being able to Neuralink with an operator so someone like Master Chief or other Spartans with the aid of an AI would have an insane amount of battlefield spatial awareness that we don't have today. Speaking of today for the real world and ironically after that first video came out but a lot of commentators have been bringing it up. The Abrams X. This is General Dynamics kind of demonstrator product to show the United States, at least the Army, what they're proposing for the new future of the Abrams tanks. Keep in mind the Abrams as a family has been around since, honestly, the Cold War. Most militaries are like that. Since the Cold War ended, most countries have not been developing entirely new main battle tanks, instead iterating on the current ones they have. The Abrams X is going to use diesel electric powertrain. That's why I said the commentators were actually 100% right. And I'll own the fact that I was mistaken in my earlier video thinking that that wouldn't be very feasible. It actually is very feasible and it offers a significant improvement in efficiency. And for those that don't understand when I say like diesel electric, effectively you have a two stroke big diesel uh, engine that is turning an alternator that provides electricity to electric motors in the tracks. Now there's no true specification that I could find in terms of battery storage, but they do mention the ability to run the vehicle more or less off where the engine, the diesel engine itself is not turning, but stored electrical power is still providing power to the sensor assemblies and stuff like that, allowing the Abrams X to be able to lurk somewhere with no thermal noise or obvious signs of movement and collect all sorts of passive imaging um, data. When we talk about the gun, it, it's actually unmanned, just like the Scorpion. It uses an auto loader, like the Scorpion, as well as higher pressure inside the barrel for increased muzzle velocity, making the gun more lethal, just like the Scorpion. The thing that the Abrams is known for it still has will be the blowout panels. Despite not having crew members in the turret, the, the blowout panels will still provide plenty of crew safety in case of a completely catastrophic ammunition burnout. It has a 30mm remote weapon system on top, and it sits on a pivot, and if you actually look closely at it, it sits almost in a cradle, giving it a huge amount of range of motion. Now, 30mm is fairly decent at engaging different types of targets, not the best, but workable. And of course, the Abrams X will still feature all sorts of active protection systems. That's going to be things like the trophy system that uses radar to detect incoming munitions and destroy them, as well as a robust suite of sensors, the ability to build a high amount of situational awareness, networking between tanks as well as other vehicles such as aircraft, and then enhanced battle management, being able to know where you are, you're at and where other friendlies are at. Cool. So how do the two mesh up? 
Well, like I said, both represent massive upgrades to the tanks that we previously discussed. The M820 is bar none significant improvement over the M808. It represents a tank that I would say is incredibly credible and realistic that if I saw today, I wouldn't think much over. Much in the same vein, the Abrams X is an almost perfect comparison because this is a demonstrated new technology that is brand new to the world. And in many ways, the, Abram, the Abrams X and the MA-20 are, are similar. And, and that comparison for technology is really cool because now you have a futuristic sci-fi game, but a lot of the concepts that we used to think were sci-fi are actually showing up in the current world. The other thing that is still a little bit odd, and it's mainly for gameplay reasons, the MA-20 is looking at it, doesn't have any sort of independent commander or gunner sights. But that's, you know, mainly we operate in third person when we're playing the games. And what I say about that is if you look at an Abrams X, you'll see two kind of camera turrets, more or less, like pods. And that allows the gunner and the commander to be looking independently. The gunner could be shooting an enemy vehicle while the commander is designating additional targets or just building situational awareness on the battlefield. Both feature high pressure barrels. The M820s is still going to be a significantly larger caliber. The Abrams is 120mm, while the 820 uses 150mm, which is almost the same size as heavy artillery in use by post Soviet Union nations, the 152mm, as well as 155mm used by the US and other Western militaries in NATO. Both feature heavily the use of precision rounds. Things like contact, delay, air bursts, and potentially fin guided munitions. And what that means is when the munition comes out, it has the ability to guide to a specific point. Things like maybe even laser guided rounds. Because keep in mind, just because you're pointing your gun barrel at something doesn't mean the round is going to hit. Things like atmospherics as well as other gun to sight errors could cause it to be slightly off. Fin guided rounds gets around that by taking it directly to where you're aiming. The use of diesel or other fuel electric hybrid engines in both increases efficiency greatly. And like I mentioned, you have the ability to have that main engine off using stored electrical power to provide electricity to your sensors, this masks your thermal energy. You won't be visible using infrared cameras and it'll be significantly quieter. In real world applications, that means you could hide a tank in a tree line or on a hill and to the naked eye, especially at night, when you don't have like your color vision available to you, it'd be very, very, very hard to see. Now the MA-20 being single or dual operator, particularly when we use as Spartans as single operator, Without any form of neuralinking, which the UNSC does have, as well as artificial intelligence, you would struggle for situational awareness, and that's because fighting alone is hard. The Abrams X has a dedicated crew member and access to all sorts of battle tracking software to maintain awareness. So you have to keep in mind, tanks on the battlefield aren't operating alone, at least not in Western militaries. And so what happens there is you want to know where you're at, you want to know what your friendly tanks are at, and you want to be moving in line with them if you're maneuvering. Otherwise, it's just good to know where your friendlies are at and where the enemy is, so you don't shoot the wrong people, which unfortunately does happen. So at the end of the day, man, the MA-20 is a significant improvement, both in realism as well as just like overall feel and visuals. And this is kind of characteristic of all new 343 designs, at least prior to Infinite. For all the faults that 343 had, a lot of their newer kind of designs were grounded in realism, anything from body armor to air vehicles. And ironically, like I said, the Abrams X reveal also shows us the future of main battle tanks in the United States as well as other Western militaries. And it's really cool to see how the two are very, very similar, both in appearance and application. And the, the Scorpion, particularly this newest variant, it, it's everything you'd want to see. It's both realistic while maintaining that cool and sexiness factor. And, and because of that, it's grounded in capability and credibility that for a sci-fi tank, it's kind of rare to see. I hope everyone enjoyed this week's video. If you like content like this, like I said, feel free to leave me comments and feedback. I truly do love learning as much as I have from y'all. Otherwise, I hope you have a fantastic weekend and expect another video next week. Take care.